You just get out around people who aren't thinking for others. And you didn't deal with that in your heart, in your bedroom. You didn't deal that in the shower and talking and communing and understanding who you are and why you're alive. That thing will slip up on you. Next thing you know, you're just another angry person that goes to church. See, the whole strategy of the enemy, this isn't condemnation. Don't get heavy on me. Look, the whole strategy of the devil is to kill the light. He doesn't care if you go to church. He cares if you shine. He could care less if you go to King's Fire. He could care less if you go wherever. He cares if you shine. He cares if you start walking in love. He cares if you start looking like the one he can't stop. Yeah? Yeah? He can't defeat mercy. He can't stop love. Wonder if you become those things. How you doing back there, man? Good to see you. Family reunion. Are you with me? The devil could care less. Honestly, I've come to believe this. I actually believe this. He'd care less if you do your daily devotions. Some people let their daily devotion take the place of knowing the Lord. So they qualify themselves by doing their devotions instead of knowing they're already qualified through the Son. So then they do their devotion to have intimacy and know Him more to look more like Him. Look, you can do your daily devotion and never commune with God. You can have a Christian t-shirt, ringtone, screensaver, and bumper sticker. (laughs) And be mad at somebody. And think all those things you do, Christian, mean you're Christian. Christianity is Christ-likeness. Christianity, little Christ-like one. It's who he is in you, and you're surrendered, you're yielded. I'm not talking perfection here. I'm talking purity of heart. I'm just talking a motive to wake up, to live in the Spirit, to have a healthy why behind my life. No matter what. No matter who does what, says what. That doesn't mean you don't believe for a better job, but until that job comes, or if it doesn't come, maintain the same countenance, walk in the same joy, pursue the same peace and love with one another. Don't let the answer of what you're believing for dictate what you express or it's idolatry. All of a sudden, you're just like the devil when he's talking about Job. He's only the way he is because you blessed him. You hedged him in. You made him fat. No wonder he's the way he is. You take away the blessing, he'll, he's like anybody else out there. He'll curse you to your face like every other man. That's the devil talking to God. See why you can't be a Christian for you? Because you'll take life personal instead of him. You actually think you have a reason to be mad at God. You actually let your circumstances trouble your heart and you won't even be able to pray because you'll lose your view of him. You'll wonder where you failed and what door you opened and why is he letting the devil and, and now you have all these questions. Instead of knowings and relationship. And all of a sudden, your life is only as good as it's going. And all of a sudden, life is speaking way louder than truth. And your focus is on what you're going through instead of who you've become in Him. And that's when it gets tight and tough. And that's when people lose their joy, their countenance, their productivity, and their expression. And that's the goal of hell itself, is that your light would never really shine, that you would never really love one another. But that in some subtle way, you just come to God for what he can do for you instead of how he can make you more like him. It's the goal of Christianity. Amen. It's Christ's likeness. It's transformation. It's a whole new way of thinking. Everybody in this room was trained by the wisdom of this world, whether you like it or not, knew it or not. Amen. By sheer instinct, you grew up a certain way. 
all our emotions looked a little the same. Some expressed a little more than others in some avenues more than others. So we type our personalities and we're this person and this and we everybody's labeling themselves with letters or numbers Because <laughs> we're so desperate for identity and then when you do that Then you get justified in however you express yourself because you're this type you're this number you're this personality You're studying a fallen person and you're locking yourself into an expression that doesn't even come from him. And then people spiritualize and say, well, God made me this way. No, no, no. Adam made you that way. I've heard this one a lot since I've been saved. Well, God gave us emotions, brother. He didn't give you the emotions you grew up with. Don't credit him for those crazy things. <laughs> Come on, you know God didn't give you the emotions you grew up with. They haven't produced the righteousness of God. Those emotions have made you all over the map. So when you look at what they're producing, you can see the fingerprints on them. It just comes natural. It's the fall of man. Somebody does you wrong, you're ticked off, angry, insecure, hurt, taken back, whatever. You're telling me that that's God? God made you in his image and that's God? If that's God, he's a basket case. We've done broke his heart a thousand times over. Nobody can fix him. He's Humpty Dumpty. <laughs> he has fallen off the wall, man. <laughs> he's amazing. On your worst day ever, he wasn't taken back. He wasn't sitting there shocked and going, oh, and after all I did for them. And now they're going to, I don't even know how I could trust them from this day forward. Well, they just proved to me they don't love me. They just want my hand. They sure don't want my face. And then you start treating you different. You know why he doesn't do that? It's not because he's God. It's because he's love. We're so generic with him. Well, because he's God. No, it's because he's love. And he made man for his image. And he said the goal of our instruction, 1 Timothy 1.5, is love. And he said, if you don't have love, you got nothing. He gets extreme with it, with giftings. He says you can have knowledge of sure. all mysteries, all knowledge, all mysteries. Yeah. That's a spiritual icon to us. Somebody that has knowledge of all mysteries, that's the closest thing to Jesus we've seen. Yeah. That's a pretty big deal right there. Everybody wants impartation from that dude. Yeah. All knowledge, all mysteries. Faith to move every mountain. Every mountain that ever stood in front, just move aside. Faith, bam, move, bam, move. Come on. We're like, lay hands right there, buddy. Oh! He does it on purpose. He's extreme with his description. He didn't say some knowledge in some mountains. He said, you can have all knowledge of all mysteries you can have faith to move every mountain what he's saying is you can have what looks like the ability of God and the power of God but if you don't have the heart of God you've got absolutely nothing I don't think my goal is to prophesy my goal is to become like him and as I become like him prophecy will be clear and sharp and productive and I won't be self-conscious and self-centered engaged in my spiritual awareness on how God's using me but instead who he is in me very important very important, especially when all of us were born into no identity. You understand all this, right? When man was born, he was born outside of what he's here for, so that means he's lost. So nobody in this room growing up has any clue who they really are. 
It's not until the light of the world comes. It's not until truth springs out of the earth. Man, don't be tricked into anything else. He's the Lord.